Sales rookie will often look outward when things go awry. They blame the leads, the marketing department, their manager, the economy, the Federal Reserve, and the tooth fairy. It's like having any training regimen at the gym. Sure, if you walk into the gym and you move heavy stuff around until you're tired, you will get stronger. But you will never get as strong as someone with an expert trainer who's planned every hour of their workout for the next year in advance and helped dial in nutrition to optimize for this pre-planned exertion. Getting a sales process is the greatest hack on getting out of the sales rookie phase, hands down. Hey everyone, and welcome to the Close More Sales Podcast. Our purpose is to empower sales professionals and entrepreneurs to push themselves to grow, achieve unimaginable success without burning out, and ultimately transform their lives. I'm Ian Ross, and I'm obsessed with all things sales. And I work with teams across the country to make more money by asking better questions. The most proven path to achieving financial freedom is maximizing your earning potential. And a sales role is the lowest barrier with the highest possible ceiling for entry onto that path. Anyone can become a killer salesperson with the right techniques, mindset, and consistency. Everything we cover on this podcast is geared toward one thing, helping you close more sales so you can live the life you want. If you have conversations where how well you speak determines how much money you can make, you were in a sales role. Now, this is terrifying for a lot of people, but I ultimately think it is a fantastic opportunity where you are in control of your results. And if you can control your results, you control your destiny. Whether you're on a base with on-target earnings and bonuses, or you're 100% commission and eating only what you kill, there is a type of freedom in having control over your income. You no longer can be told you're simply worth some minimal amount per hour or a stagnant salary per year. You get to decide because you are in control. In this episode, I want to talk you, I want to talk to you really about the three stages of a salesperson throughout their career as an individual contributor, not as a sales leader. That we can talk about at another time. As I go through this, keep your focus on which category you currently fall under. Maybe you have a suspicion where you think you are, but would love some clarity on getting to that next level. Maybe you're crushing it in one aspect of your role, but lacking consistent results in another part of your process. Maybe you don't have any idea what I'm talking about. And if that last one is true, this episode will definitely be to your benefit. Understanding where you are is the first step toward, towards knowing what you need to do to improve. Most sales reps will move through these stages in a more or less linear fashion, if they move through them at all. Plenty of people hit a roadblock in their progression, and they stay stuck. But these classifications aren't like colorful belts in a little kid's karate class. You don't get to the next stage just for showing up and then get to say you're now at that level as a baseline. Your sales skills are perishable and you can fluctuate and easily fall back down to a different stage if you don't have the proper tools in place. The three stages for an individual contributor are sales rookie, sales pro, and sales disruptor. In the most basic sense, you could classify where you fit within these stages based on four factors and only four factors. And that's the type of sales conversations you are having, the refinement of your sales process, how well you are performing on your average day, and how you adapt and react when things don't go as planned. Let's dive right in and talk about the first stage, sales rookie. If you're a seasoned vet, it might be helpful to think back to your first day in sales. If you're brand new or you've been in sales a while, and you find yourself struggling as if you were new, chances are you're still in this space. Now, people get into sales for a variety of reasons. Maybe you were tired of making hourly wage working retail, or you've been in the side hustle mode of delivering for DoorDash and driving for Uber in the evenings. Hey, maybe you were a highly educated college professor who's tired of washing his clothes in the bathtub because of not getting paid enough to give you a cushion on top of your student loan payments. Or maybe, you got a little bit of a, of a chip on your shoulder and you're willing to go out and hunt to make more money than anyone else you grew up with. Steve Trang and I have joked that when we're hiring salespeople, we're looking for D2 athletes. You didn't have the raw talent and physical abilities to cruise into D1, and yet you were putting in the work. 
you were going to the gym, working out, you know, watching what you ate, obsessing over trying to win. But it's a story as old as time. What's that line from the Sopranos? Junior always teased Tony Soprano about, you never had what it took to be a varsity athlete. You got a chip on your shoulder. Good. We can use that. Whatever caused you to take that first leap, to take the plunge into a sales role, hopefully on your first day, you have a fire in you to get this done. You're hungry and you are lean. Chances are you also have that gnawing anxiety inside of you, that fear of not knowing quite enough. What do I say if they ask for a discount? How should I answer a question about our competitors? I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm awkward. I don't know the pitch. They're going to reject me. And reject you, they did. Constant rejection. No, not interested. Put me on your do not call list. Screw you, F off. What is wrong with you people? The sales rookie is thrown in the deep end of the pool and told to figure it out. Smile and dial. Hey, it's just talking to people. Yeah, right. If only it were that easy. I mentioned the four factors that determine which category you fall under. And to, reiter and to reiterate those factors, here's how to think about them. It's the type of sales conversations you're having, the refinement of your sales process, how well you're performing on your average day, and how you adapt and react when things don't go as planned. So for the sales rookie, for the conversations that they are having, they're mostly short-lived. You're probably calling on older leads. Maybe you're knocking on doors in a tough neighborhood or you're, you know, you're dialing mom and pop stores that can't afford what you're pitching. The truth is, this part is tough for everyone on their journey. Sales can be tough. It can be really tough for expert closers dealing with highly motivated, interested prospects who have the means and the willpower to buy, let alone someone who's brand new to the field talking to tired, rude, and sometimes just plain aggressive people who'd rather spit in your coffee than hand over their credit card. But this is how you grow. This is getting your reps in. It's your apprenticeship that we all have to go through. Welcome to the grind. Now you get to get the cotton out of your cheeks when you're speaking and hone your skills. In terms of a sales process, you simply don't have one. Maybe you went through a week or two of training, if you're lucky, but it's not like that did much for you. You don't even have the context of iterating and improving on this yet. It is your very lack of a consistent process that you should lock onto first. It should motivate you, not discourage you. By simply implementing a process, even a bad process, your days will start to take shape. It's like having any training regimen at the gym. Sure, if you walk into the gym and you move heavy stuff around until you're tired, you will get stronger, but you will never get as strong as someone with an expert trainer who's planned every hour of their workout for the next year in advance and helped dial in nutrition to optimize for this pre-planned exertion. Getting a sales process is the greatest hack on getting out of the sales rookie phase, hands down. And how well is the sales rookie performing on an average day? You don't really have an average day because you're not following a process enough to be confident and know your numbers. If you're working hard and you're working smart, your manager isn't disappointed in you. That's about the best case scenario for the rookie's average day. And then the inevitable happens. The rejection starts this thing. The sales rookie will often look outward when things go awry. They blame the leads, the marketing department, their manager, the economy, the Federal Reserve, and the tooth fairy. Hey, it, it, it's rainy today. No one wants to buy. It's November. No one's going to buy until after the holidays. It's Monday. No one wants to buy at the start of the week. You know, it's a Tuesday. It's only the day after Monday. It's Wednesday, hump day. No one wants to buy halfway through the week. It's Thursday, and everyone is worn out from working so hard. You know, it's Friday. Everyone's thinking about the weekend. No one will buy on a Saturday. Everyone's out with their family. It's Sunday, the Lord's Day. What, am I supposed to get someone to buy on a day of rest? You're blaming everyone else but yourself. You're blaming all the circumstances around you and not taking personal responsibility. Let me tell you, that will not get you anywhere. As a sales rookie, it's important to take ownership and responsibility of your own failure as well as your success. Instead of blaming external factors, focus on what you can control. Your skill set as a sales rep, your attitude on a team, your effort to surpass expectations, and your ability to adapt. Now, on to the second stage, the sales pro. 
How are the sales conversations going for the professional? They're smooth and natural. The professional knows their product inside and out. They understand the pain points of their prospects, and they have a pretty good plan to address objections or questions that come up. They have a level of confidence that comes from experience and knowledge. And what about their sales process? One of the biggest separators between the rookie and the pro is that the pro has some type of process. Maybe it's just the general flow of the conversation. Maybe it's how they start an appointment, or, or maybe it's just that they figured out the closing line that gives them the highest success rate. And they say it the same way every single time. There's room for improvement, sure. But the professional has started moving towards consistency. On his average day, the sales pro is performing right around what's expected of him. He's usually hitting and sometimes even passing quota. He is, for all intents and purposes, average. Yes, he's making a decent living. That is the power of a sales role. That's the beauty of being in sales. He's still striving to get better every day. And when things don't go according to plan, when obstacles arise, the sales professional's first instinct isn't to immediately blame others or external factors. He understands that something going wrong, a deal falling through, is his responsibility. They take a step back and do their best to assess the situation objectively. What went wrong? What could have been done differently? How can I improve for the next one? The problem, however, is that the sales pro can only handle that derailment so many times. He can only so take so many bumps on the head and scrapes of the knee before asking if he can go home and get a Band-Aid. What do I mean by this? Let me know if this sounds familiar to any of you. The sales pro starts a new role at a new company, selling a new product or service in a new but adjacent industry based on what he's used to, where his experience lies. He understands the company's training is weak, the leads aren't amazing, the product or service doesn't have a 100% satisfaction weight. He understands all that because he's seen it before. And he understands that this is his responsibility to deal with. He has to learn how to talk to these new prospects. He has to compensate for the jaded leads and the broken product. This ain't his first rodeo. And so then, he starts to have some success. Things start to go his way. He starts outperforming the other reps. He impresses his manager with his results. He starts to get a little company-wide recognition. He goes on an all-expenses-paid trip. He leases a brand-new BMW, the whole nine yards, gets a Rolex. Everything's great for this guy. Hey, this guy is a professional. But then something happens. Maybe the company turns off marketing. Maybe a change in interest rates reduces how many people can afford the product. Maybe a meteor wipes out inventory for the next two years. Maybe it's something the sales pro's personal life, a divorce, death in the family, it doesn't matter. Unforeseen circumstances hurt his results. And what does the sales pro do? He is furious at what went wrong. He knew it was his responsibility to get good at selling in this position, but when there's a challenge, he views it as a negative. Now, you've heard me say this before, a bunch already. This is your responsibility to fix this. Your responsibility. Your responsibility. It sounds negative to a lot of people. So you need to reframe this. This is your opportunity. The company turned off marketing. Fantastic. Now I get to learn how to prospect more efficiently. A change in interest rates affects affordability. Now I get to level up my negotiating skills. Catastrophic disaster wiped out all my inventory. Hallelujah. I have been waiting for a chance to stand out from all these other sales reps who are coasting on the value of our product. So what does the sales pro do when things break? He switches it up and goes to work somewhere else where he understands it's his responsibility to get good. He goes ahead and does just that until something stops working and he starts the process over again. In the world of sales, there are those who follow paths. There's those who pave them. As we venture beyond the fundamentals here and into the heart of strategy, innovation, of getting really good, we enter a realm where the sales pro transforms into something more, a sales disruptor. This evolution begins with a mastery of the sales process. And mastery is not about perfection. It's not possible to be perfect, though we're always in pursuit of it. It's about a profound understanding of every element of the process, from the psychological triggers of clients to the intricate dance of negotiation. What types of sales conversations is the disruptor having? Well, they're no different than the sales professional. 
He was already having the same conversations as before. He's trying to close a prospect as efficiently as he can. Sure, he may be compensated a little bit more based on his comp plan or the service he's selling might be, you know, cost a little bit more, so he gets paid a little bit more. But the nuances are not drastic in terms of his actual conversation. His sales process is absolutely 100% dialed in. It's dialed in. He understands the framework. He knows when to say what and how to say it. He can follow every step perfectly if he so chooses, but doesn't need to. Picture a seasoned jazz musician here that can play the standards, the crowd pleasers, they can play the notes on the page, sure, that's the sales pro. That sales pro is playing the notes on the page. But when the musician starts to improvise, to create, that is when the magic happens. That's when you stop and listen in jazz. In sales, your script is your standard, your process, your playbook. The sales disruptors, that individual, he's confident enough in his understanding and it is when he has to play the notes that aren't on the page where he really stands out. The results on his average day put him in the top 10% of performers. He's able to deliver over and over day after day and is, quite frankly, the type of employee that every company everywhere would love to have walked through the door. Recruiters seek him out on LinkedIn. People ask him to come on podcasts like this one to tell his story. He knows what he's doing. And in terms of adapting to when things don't go as planned, I can sum it up by contrasting the three stages together. Here's how to think about it. The sales rookie blames his leads. He blames the marketing. He blames interest rates. He blames everyone but himself why he can't close the deal. The sales pro blames himself. He knows he needs to get better and he needs to work harder. He knows it's his fault and he accepts as much, but can go through the dreaded sales roller coaster of beating himself up for not performing. The sales disruptor doesn't blame anyone because he trusts in his process and in his skills, and he will iterate and improve on the mistakes he made as that's the progression towards the best version of himself. So for my sales rookies listening now, you've got this spark, this drive when you start. It's awesome. It is just the beginning. Getting through the rough patches is about more than just hanging in there. It's about learning from every no. How could I have turned that into a yes? How could I have done this better? And when things don't pan out, remember, it's not about the bad leads or tough market. It's about asking yourself, what is the lesson here? How can I embrace it? What am I, what am I responsible for learning from this? This one switch, this will be profound for you. And moving on to the sales pros, you folks, you've taken your knocks. You're standing taller because of them. You realize that selling isn't just about saying the exact right perfect words at the exact right time and having the perfect pitch. It's about refining what you do and owning every part of it, every single day that you work. You've learned to smooth out those highs and lows, and you found your steady pace. The real score is your effort, the day in, day out grind that you put in. That's the measure of a pro. And for the sales instructors out there, you are the ones changing the game. You've taken the training manual, the script, hell, the entire rule book, you've tossed it. You don't need it anymore. Your conversations, they go deeper. You're able to commit yourself to finding ways to improve. And these are not just transactions to you. Your sales conversations are the course where you get to play ball. They're the canvas for your art and the laboratory where you get to fine tune and test your theorems. Your approach to prospecting, consulting, and closing, it isn't just effective, it's effortless. Or at least that's how you make it look. Because the reality is you probably work harder than everyone else around you. You've turned sales into more than a job. It's a craft. and You're the master. If you're listening or watching and you feel that you have room to grow and improve, we might be able to help get you there. Text CLOSE, C-L-O-S-E, to 33777. And we'll see if we can help you out along the process. I'm Ian Ross. This has been the Close More Sales Podcast.